Hi, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. I don't know if anyone has heard this or not. It hasn't been in the news much, but there's a virus going around and no one's really allowed to go anywhere anymore. We've got to be honest. The coronavirus is dominating the news cycle right now. We have to cover it. We're going to do our damnest afterwards to cover other stuff too, because there's more to life than Corona. After hearing about positive test results of hydroxychloroquine, an Arizona couple decided to try that cure for themselves. Of course, they didn't have the virus and they didn't take the right drug. They decided to drink an aquarium cleaner with a similar name. The guy died and his wife is in critical condition and they've decided along with much of the left to blame President Trump for their actions. Now you guys know that I have criticized the president. In fact, I get more hate mail about being a liberal with Trump derangement syndrome than I get hate mail about anything else, which is really weird considering my actual political position. But that's a story for another time. Look guys, everything is not Trump's fault. Is it Trump's fault that we didn't move on this faster in January and February? Absolutely. Hit him on that. I sure as shit do. But is it Trump's fault? that when he names a drug that has promise in order to endear a little bit of hope in the general population, that somebody decides to drink aquarium cleaner? No, it is not. Would you like a Snickers bar? Yes. Would you like arsenic? Also yes, because it has the sounds R at the end of bar and snick at the beginning of Snickers. So it pretty much has to be the same thing. Please everybody, if a doctor hasn't prescribed it to you, do not ingest anything that isn't an over-the-counter drug or food or drink from your local grocery store. And you're gonna be fine. You'll be just fine like that. No aquarium cleaner, unless you have ick, which since you're not a fish, you probably won't get. In scarier news, pet shop owners across the country have reported a vast increase in chloroquine sales people Jesus Christ, do not drink aquarium cleaner. The Senate shockingly arrived at a bill this week after days of tomfoolery in an attempt to bail the economy out of this coronavirus pandemic. It's a thousand plus pages and we haven't read all of it yet because we had to knock out war and peace first, but here's the meat and potatoes of it. If you make less than $75,000 a year, you're gonna get 1200 bucks. If you make between 75,000 and $99,000, you're going to get something between 1,200 and zero. If you make over 99,000, you're getting jack shit, but a pat on the back. You also get $500 per kid, but we're not clear yet on whether or not that also decreases as you go over $99,000. Probably it does. Some good news on the small business front. Small businesses are supposed to get access to billions of dollars of loans in order to stay solvent. The loan interest rate is going to be about 3%, which most of you know is far lower than anything you're gonna get on the market. Additionally, if you prove that you've kept all of your people employed, there's going to be a tax credit for roughly 50% of all your salaried employees. So that's pretty cool. If you decide against taking a loan, there's another option. If your business has shrunk by 50%, in other words, if Q4 is twice the size of Q1, then you're eligible for a tax credit of up to 50% of all your salaries. Hospitals are gonna get $100 billion in funding, obvious reasons. Unemployment got beefed up by an additional $600 a week. This is pretty big news right now because unemployment numbers have spiked to 3.3 million, the highest it's been in forever. Struggling industries are getting access to $500 billion in grants and loans. This includes the airline industries, farmers, and even some state and local governments. However, it does not include cruise lines or big oil, as many people had thought. The insurance industry got nothing, which should give us all a little case of the smiles. The Pentagon got another $10.5 billion to help deal with the coronavirus, as well as additional R&D. $25 billion got approved for food stamps and the SNAP program. Restaurants and hotels are going to get a tax benefit for any improvements they've made. 
They can probably use other stuff, but you know, all right, that's cool too. And finally, distilleries don't have to pay tax on the type of alcohol that is used in hand sanitizer, as many of them have switched their production capacities from making sweet, sweet booze to making sweet, sweet hand sanitizer. In the hopes of brightening spirits and to occupy the time of children while this whole quarantine thing's going on, a bunch of US families across the nation are putting up Christmas lights. Apparently lights have been strung up all across the nation from Florida all the way up to Rhode Island. God damn it, I just took mine down. The military growth rate of the coronavirus is drastically outpacing the growth rate in civilians. I can't think of a single reason why that would be, other than the first sergeant's announcement that if you're feeling kind of sick, just rub some dirt in it. But don't miss PT or the commander's inventory inspection. In all seriousness, stupid military policy has let coronavirus rip through the barracks like it's syphilis ripping through the barracks. That simile is funny because it's essentially comparing the same thing. And it's a simile, not a metaphor, because I use the word like. The fine people of London have created an online calculator to determine how long your current toilet paper supply is going to last. The only information you need to provide is the number of toilet paper rolls you currently have and the number of bathroom visits per day by the family. It will then spit out how many days you can ride it out before you need to seek additional supplies. Great work, England. You've made the best out of a shitty situation. You know what's probably a great thing to do during this pandemic? Cough on somebody in a grocery store and tell them that you have the coronavirus. Sorry, let me back up. That's a terrible thing to do. George Falcone, who is a terrible piece of human garbage and unfortunately not an underworld crime boss in Batman, was asked by a Wegmans employee to please step away six feet back from the person in front of him. You, a normal person who understands we're in the middle of a pandemic and where social distancing is now the new norm, would have promptly apologized and taken a few steps backwards. But our boy George wasn't feeling it, and he stepped closer to the employee, coughed in her face, and told her, I have the coronavirus. Then while leaving the store afterwards, he told a couple of other employees that they were lucky to have jobs. Well, I hope the joke was worth it, George, because George has been charged with third degree terrorist threats, harassment, and obstruction. This could land him up to six years in prison. What you serving your time for, Corleone? Murder? Drugs? You kill someone with drugs? Nah, bro, I just coughed on someone in a Wegmans. On Tuesday, Olympic Committee spokesman Dick Pound let the world know that Prime Minister of Japan Shinzo Abe and the Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach have decided to postpone the Olympics until 2021. This is the fourth time in history that the Olympics has been postponed. However, it is only the first time that the Olympics has been postponed because of a pandemic. The first three times it was postponed was because of a couple of little wars known as World War I and World Wars Vi. In Chulagansi, I was speaking the loser's language. So that in itself sets an Olympic record. So we've got that going for us, which as you know, is nice. In apocalypse checklist news, a series of earthquakes rattled the area of West Texas on Thursday. Tremors registered between 3.0 and 5.0 on the Richter scale. Apparently it could be felt for almost 150 miles all the way out to El Paso and Juarez, respectively. There have been no reports of damage or casualties. Thus far we've covered war, plague, fires, earthquakes, and celebrity quarantine videos. With that box checked, we look forward to reporting on the next wave of the apocalypse. And in the final coronavirus news, we've got news from my friends. I've been told by numerous doctor friends that the United States is in better shape than all other countries in terms of ventilators per capita. My friend, Dr. Mike Simpson, has a theory as to why this is the case, and I'm going with it. He believes we have more ventilators than any other country per capita because of the vast quantity of boob jobs that we execute on an annual basis. There were over 320,000 boob jobs last year, or as doctors like to call them, breast augmentations. And after doing the math, there's at least a 7% chance that if we get through this better than expected, it's because of boobs. So if you see any boobs out there, thank them. Now, on to the other stuff! Despite lockdowns and quarantines, the U.S. Space Force has launched its sixth and final extremely high-frequency satellite. Launch crews were kept to a minimum, and all non-essential rocket scientists and geniuses were kept from the launch room. 
Well, folks, the launch went flawlessly, and we now officially have Space Force communication satellites. The United States has indicted Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and several of his staff on charges of narco-terrorism. I believe that's the kind of terrorism where you tell on other people. Nope. Apparently, I was wrong. It seems to involve drugs. <laughs> Who knew? Anyway, he's being accused of helping Colombia ship 250 million tons of cocaine, which I'm being told is quite a lot. This is a bold move as we don't typically indict other heads of state, even when they're total pieces of crap. It's also doubly odd because we're pushing Venezuela further and further into the warm embrace of China and Russia, who are currently shitting all over the Monroe Doctrine. So it looks like we're brewing up a nice little Cold War. UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones has been arrested for aggravated DWI and negligent use of a firearm. Come on, John. Tom Brady is trying to trademark the phrase TB times TB now that he's at Tampa Bay. Some of you will remember that he tried and failed to trademark the phrase Tom Terrific last year. The USPTO has stated that they're not sure yet whether or not they're going to give him the rights to TB times TB. However, they did want to let him know that the phrase Benedict Tom is available. Netflix and YouTube are reducing their default video settings to standard resolution in fears of overloading bandwidth. Some Gen Z and younger millennials are frustrated by this, but us old guys are just happy we have more than four channels and we don't have to adjust the bunny ears to get rid of the fuzz or make the edges clearer. Honestly, we have the best shit to complain about. What a great time to be alive. The Gun Violence Prevention and Community Safety Act was submitted at the end of January by Georgia Democrat Representative Hank Johnson. This is a massive gun control bill that is longer than the coronavirus relief bill and war and peace. What can I say? We both just love Tolstoy. After reading through almost all of it, not only may I have suffered an aneurysm, but I do have some cliff notes on this massive bill. They are also in a smattering of no particular order because aneurysm. It'll create a licensing program. So to own a gun, you have to get a license not only from the federal government, but also the state government. It'll institute national background checks with a mandatory seven day waiting period. To get that license, you have to do a live fire test and a written test. It's going to create a national gun registry. It will ban almost every semi-automatic rifle because of that beautiful assault weapons ban. It will institute a federal large capacity magazine ban. There will be national red flag laws across the board, and it will also issue grants to states that have their own red flag laws. Taxes! Who doesn't love unconstitutional taxes, the likes of which would have the founding fathers cutting a guillotine down I-95 with a trailer hitch? Guns and lowers will be taxed at no less than 30%. Ammunition will be taxed at no less than 50%. There will also be an increase on excise tax for all firearms. You can't own a gun if you're under 21. Sorry, adult children. It will be illegal to purchase more than one firearm in a month. There will be federally mandated firearm storage parameters. You will no longer be able to build your own gun. Correction, you will no longer be allowed to build your own gun, but perfectly able to. It bans suppressors, silencers, and mufflers. Sorry, Honda Civics. FFLs will have to follow new security measures, and it will be at their cost to bring them up to compliance. The expansion of gun-free zones. The act also issues grants for government buybacks of firearms. It also gives the Attorney General $50 million a year in grants that go to research for firearm safety and gun violence prevention. Industry reform. The repeal of the exclusion of pistols, revolvers, and other firearms from the consumer product safety laws. Basically allows the CPSC to determine which guns are deemed legal to sell based on their own created standards. It eliminates the limit on the amount of inspections the Attorney General can conduct on dealers. Enhanced record keeping and reconciling for dealers. Sounds very Gestapo, yeah? Now, if any of the provisions in this act are found to be invalid, or dare I say, unconstitutional, it would not affect the rest of the act. Everything else still goes. And if passed, it would be set to start in September of this year. And now, once again, my head hurts. 
This year is super important to keep an eye on what Congress is trying to sneak by the American people. And that's not hyperbole. As in the case of the Justice Department, asking to suspend habeas corpus by quietly asking for the powers to do that. It's an odd thing to say given that we're all holed up in our homes, but try not to give up constitutional freedoms for a few bucks or the promise of government protection during these crazy times. And finally, in Florida Man news, a Florida man was charged with felony theft after he tried to smuggle 66 rolls of toilet paper in a trash can out of a Marriott hotel. 31-year-old Angel Esteban was arrested in the wee hours of the morning when a security guard named Yamil noticed some strange activity was afoot outside of his local Marriott. We'd also like to point out that Angel Esteban is a silly name because it's two first names pretending to be a first and last name. Yamil quickly called the police and Angel was detained. In the back of Angel's car, the police found 66 rolls of toilet paper, each valued at 99 cents. Angel stated that he was stealing the toilet paper out of a sense of charity for the less fortunate. Kind of like a toilet paper Robin Hood. There was no Maid Marian, however, to save him as he was charged with third degree theft for stealing from a public lodging facility. Ugh. Florida has said that there have been over a hundred incidents so far of either toilet paper theft or violence over toilet paper. Glad to see that you're not letting us down, Florida man. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already, and Matt and I want you to know that if we die from the coronavirus, we've really enjoyed interacting with all of you. Well, most of you. Some of you. At least three of you. Two. There's two I can think of off the top of my head that we, we have enjoyed it. Also, raindrop.com. Use the code BNN for 25% off. Support small business. Support the Bad News Network. And speaking of supporting small business, Matt and I are going to read off a list of businesses that you guys told us needed a little support last week. Clatta Irish Pub in Orlando, Florida is having a tough time. Stop by and grab a meal. Canyon Road Bar and Grill in Breckenridge, Texas. Burley Guys Junk Removal in Michigan. Dane's Barbershop in Biloxi, Mississippi. The Cupcake Delivers in Fairfax, Virginia and the DC area. Veteran-owned Rickety Cricket Brewing in Kingman, Arizona. Waterfalls Car Wash in Allen, Texas. Chapel Hill Gracie in Chapel Hill, North Carolina for online jujitsu and workouts. California Kurobuta out of Hollister, California. Crazy Cup Coffee Shop, Plant City, Florida. La Pasadita in Hayesville, Kansas for some great Mexican food. The Boathouse, restaurant in Richmond, Virginia area. This person likes to eat, so I'm just gonna read them off because there's just too many names. Fiesta Ranchera, The Grasshopper, Mario's, and the Sunnyside Cafe in Adrian, Michigan. Savage Creations Custom Wood Carvings, also a veteran-owned business. Hotel Windrow and the Basalt Restaurant in Ellensburg, Washington. Executive Transport Company located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Dan and Kay's Wing Cafe in Rocky Top. Tennessee. Tennessee. Mm -mm. The Backyard Tap House in Florence, Montana. Ask them about their bacon beer. Tobacco Wood Brewing Company in Oxford, North Carolina. American Patriot Designs, just arrived in Charlotte, North Carolina. Copper Hop Brewery in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. Elio owned and operated. Rockland Bar and Grill in Rockland, Mass. Currently offering curbside pickup and delivery. The Great Games Library in Tallahassee, Florida. They also do rentals. Christopher Wilson of Nissan at Midland, Texas. Lehigh Vapor in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Not to be confused with the band Nazareth. Trapezium Brewery in Fort Lee, Virginia area. They'll give you stone oven pizza and beer. And kegs too, for that quarantine sized beer. The Boxcar Ale House in Seattle, Washington. Apparently they have a delicious bacon burger. Gusto Pizza in Des Moines, Iowa. 50% off for carryout options with their family package. Immaculate Reflections in Brentwood, California. The Trading Post, LLC.com for guns and ammo. Willoughby Cars in Willoughby, Ohio. LuckyGunner.com for guns and ammo. Boulevard Pizza in Wendell, North Carolina. La Piazza Pizza in Parker, Arizona. They made up pizza kits for kids when they were in school. R&D Technology in Houston, Texas. 
Century Business Solutions in Topeka, Kansas. The Crooked Hook in Jacksonville, Arkansas. CheapDogResponse.com for all your Tim Kennedy needs. The County Line in McKenna, Washington. Peter Welch's Gym on YouTube for incredible boxing workouts and conditioning that you can do right at home. Indulgence Massage in Walla Walla, Washington. Steadfast performance with Coach Casaus in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who can give you custom tailored workouts that you can do right at home. Silver Wolf Comics in Bakersfield, California. Apparently, it's a great place to buy comics and just have some quality time. McCleary's Irish Pub in Marietta, Pennsylvania. Apparently, you can call ahead of time and get a full growler of beer, which is just a cool thing to say. Growler of beer. And that's the list that we got from you guys last week. We're happy to do more, and we're very happy to support small business. Please continue to do the same.